Jim Kerr with John Mellencamp on iHeartRadio Icons. And we're celebrating the release of his latest album, Strictly a One-Eyed Jack, which is out today. Now, we just heard Wasted Days. And I remember when we premiered that song last year, uh, Bruce Springsteen performed with you on that song. And I must also uh, remind our friends uh, that the video that you put together for that song was was absolutely incredible. If people get a chance to see it, they they really should. Uh, how did that collaboration come about, John? Um, you know, I've known Bruce for a long time, uh, but we never, you know, we talked and we were friendly. But uh, you know, about three or four years ago, I don't remember how long ago it was, about three or four years ago, we did a uh, Sting's Last Rainforest thing, and... Uh, they wanted Bruce and I to sing together, and uh, and we did, and it went really well. And uh, so we kind of realized, at least I did, and I think he did, that you know him and I have a lot in common. And uh, uh, I love hearing his stories, and uh, I try not to bore him too much with mine. Uh, but uh, uh, we just became friends, and uh, I think you know of all the people that I've met in the music business, Bruce is probably the loveliest guy I've met. So uh, him and I have a very nice rapport, and uh, and uh, uh, I uh, enjoy having him as, uh, being able to call him a friend. Well, he's also featured on uh, Did You Say Such a Thing. What can you tell us about that song? Um... Well, he's playing guitar on on three or four of the songs on the record, too, you know. Uh, Bruce was really known as a guitar player, you know, in New Jersey when he first started out. He wasn't really a singer-songwriter, he was a guitar player. And uh, so uh, he came in, he came into the studio and, and he played guitar on some of the records. And it was fun, it was interesting to have... Uh, you know, somebody that I admired, you know, because Bruce will always set the bar real high for us younger guys. He's a bit, he's a bit older than me. <laughs> not much, but not enough I can say that. Uh, but he set the bar really high. So, you know, I think all of us songwriters are a little indebted to Bruce uh, because of uh, the songs he wrote. And he put down a big footprint and he said, here, you young guys, fill it. And that's what we all tried to do. So uh, uh, he made me work a little bit harder than I normally would because I'm a lazy fuck. <laughs> we waited a year for the album, but we sure heard from you while we were waiting. Last year saw the release of a live album and documentary, The Good Samaritan. That documentary chronicled your free tour back in 2000 when you performed on street corners and in public parks. What <laughs> yeah. led you to revisit and release those recordings 22 years later? Um. <clears throat> you know, we did, I did that, uh, I took my two sons and my wife Elaine, uh, and we just got in a bus with two young musicians, and I thought to myself, I was talking to Elaine, and I go, what would Woody Guthrie do if he was alive today, where would he play? Because he used to play, you know, um, uh, in the fields for the workers, and I... Uh, felt like I owed it to my audience since they had all paid and bought my records and stuff that I should give give them something back. So we just got in a bus and we just uh, started playing. And the first, I think the first place we played was Boston. We, you know, we didn't tell anybody we were playing. We just showed up. I just showed up on the street corner and started playing. Uh, <clears throat> the first show had, I think about, by the time we were done, 800 people had showed up in a park in Boston. Uh, but the internet had just started, which, you know, I wasn't familiar with, but other people were. And I think the last show we did was in Chicago, and there were 30,000 people there. It was crazy. Oh. It was like we had little teeny amps, you know, little teeny everything, you know, and we weren't prepared for anything like that. But we played at lunchtime where people could come and eat their lunch and listen to us play for about an hour. And... Uh, and that's, that's how it all went down. And the kids that were playing uh, accordion and violin with me, they never knew where we were going because I left it to Elaine. It was like, hey, Elaine, where are we going tomorrow? And she'd go, well, how about let's go to Pittsburgh? Okay, let's go to Pittsburgh. So we'd go to Pittsburgh and, and we would find a, a public spot and, you know, 
Detroit got really mad at us, though, because they wanted us to get a permit. And I said, fuck you, I'm not getting a permit. <laughs> well, we'll have a race riot, they said. I said, why? Well, all these white people coming in. But we played where Jimmy Hoffa used to uh, make all his union speeches, which was weird and odd, but kind of set up for what I was doing. And uh, no, it was, it, it was a fun summer. It was a fun summer. It was fun, something fun to do, and I felt uh, I felt good about it, and I think a lot of people did. And so, we had you know uh, a whole bunch of uh, videotape of that because uh, uh, Elaine had recorded all of it. Of course, we couldn't find her shit, uh, but we found everybody else's, and fans sent stuff in, and uh, and so we, we we cobbled together this 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 little forty five minute documentary and and uh, played the songs and put out a little record. And I think TCM is the only place you can see it. Turner Classic Movies, if you go to their website, I think you can see it there. Well, The Good Samaritan was uh, narrated by uh, Matthew McConaughey. Uh, besides the fact that he's an incredibly talented narrator, <laughs> why did you choose him? Was there a special reason? I, I've known Matthew when he was just a shadow on a movie screen. Uh, I <clears throat> went to my agency, I was making a, a video, and I said, hey, I need a young actor. And they said, well, we got a guy that loves you, and, uh, and it turned out to be Matthew, and Matthew and I have been friends ever since. And I, that was like 19, I don't know, 92 or some shit like that. John, congratulations on your new album, Strictly a One-Eyed Jack, on sale now. And thank you for joining us virtually tonight. Jim, thank you very much. And thank you to iHeartRadio and John Sykes and uh, all the people that uh, made this happen. Because as everybody knows, this was put together very rapidly. <laughs> this time last week, we didn't even know we were going to do this. So uh, uh, we're happy to be here and happy to everybody showed up. And I hope you guys are having a good time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.